Welcome back to Cricket Aviation. My name is Jim Payne, and in this video, we are going to form and install the cockpit border for the Cree Cree. The cockpit border is really the last remaining structural part of the forward fuselage, with the exception of the forward skin, which we're going to leave off for now so we still have access to the nose gear and the uh, rudder pedal area um, to work on in the future. Uh, so in this video, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to form this complex curve. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and get the cockpit border glued into place. We're going to cut and fit and install all the uh, stiffeners that need to be installed behind the cockpit border. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cover installing the two stiffeners and the supports here between frame uh, 6 and frame 7 that's on the lower part of the fuselage that I forgot to cover when we were doing the, uh, the installation of the stiffeners on the side of the fuselage. So, Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, remember to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. The links will be in the description, so stick around. We will shape the cockpit border for a Cricri. So I went ahead and cut out the uh, parts for the cockpit border. Um, so I've got the two sides of the cockpit border. Obviously one goes that way, one goes this way. And then I cut out uh, two of the forms that I can stack on top of each other to put this in between. And we're gonna bend one of the edges over to just shy of 90 degrees. And of course, these cockpit borders go on either side of the fuselage here at the top. They go between frame seven. In fact, they connect right here where I had to do my little joggle here on frame seven. It runs all the way along here and it basically covers up and attaches to each one of these frames all the way down here and then somehow attaches here up to frame two. So what I'm going to do is just try and go ahead and bend these real quick. Uh, this should go fairly easily, so it's just a matter of... Uh, getting these clamped and I do have to radius the edge here where the bend's going to be a small amount um, but I'm just going to use a rubber mallet to try and bend these over very carefully and uh, try not to make too many dents in it because it will show uh, anything that I do. In fact I think the edge that gets bent is actually the top edge here. Um, the other side is what gets pinched into the form. So it's this edge here that would show if I get you know, a lot of dents or I'm not careful with the bending process. I'm gonna try and be as careful as I can. That's why I'm gonna use a rubber mallet and not a, uh, a, a metal hammer to do this and it should bend pretty easily. So let me go ahead and pinch one of these in between these two forms. I'll go ahead and bend it and uh, we'll see how it fits. All right, I was able to put the first one in here and bend it and of course, that looks super ugly. You can see it's wavy all the way down, of course, because we're taking, you know, sheet metal that was up here, which is longer, uh, a longer radius at that point, we're bending it down. And of course it will not conform to the perfect shape here of what we're trying to bend. So normally if this was a rib or something, we would be doing flutes in it. And, and pounding the flutes down. Now, this is actually supposed to end up being a compound curve because the fuselage is curving this way and this way. So what we're gonna do is pull this out and then just see what it looks like here on the fuselage, on the fuselage. So let me uh, just unscrew these a little bit. And you'll see it kind of pops out here. So it kind of takes most of its shape back. Um, you can see I've got a few dents in it, but you can see, see the compound curve here that occurs. And then what we're gonna do is take this over to here and see how it fits. Now, I've gotta bend the end over here, I believe, but this fits really, really close. if I put this in here. And of course there'll be rivets along this outside edge so it will have a tendency to, to pull itself back into shape. But I'm looking at this right now thinking this is really close. I think all I have to do is uh, get this end bent so that it fits down in here. And I think this is gonna be very, very close. And then of course this is supposed to conform to the ribs here. 
I might have to bend it a little bit more. In other words, there's a fair amount of spring back in here still. I'm not sure. Well, I don't know. Actually, it looks pretty good. No, maybe a little bit more. I'll have to, I'll have to play around with this. Uh, but this is looking actually quite, quite good along here for just doing that. So let me get this end bent over. I, I think there's a, a lip that gets bent on the end here. I want to go ahead and bend that into place so that this will fit down in here. Then I'll determine if I need to maybe tighten this uh, radius just a little bit more just to make sure that it conforms properly between the top skin here and the the the, the um, frames that are in here. So I'm going to play with it, play around with this a little bit more, but for a first try, this looks really really good. So I did want to show you this is that end that needs to be bent over for two rivets that end up going into frame seven. Uh, so what I need to do with this piece that I just bent here is just bend that end over so it fits and then I should be able to drop this into place and just see how my uh, angle is around here and if I need to tighten that bend at all but uh, yeah otherwise this looks pretty good. Okay so I'm very very pleased with the fit of that cockpit border. Uh, the only thing I did have to do is on the top of each one of these frames here, I, I put a straight edge across the top of the angle and then just made sure that I had some clearance at the top of this, um, a, a top of each frame because otherwise this top edge here, if it was, com if it was exactly, uh, you know, 90 degrees from where this uh, uh, top edge ended up along the uh, edge of the cockpit here, um, this would actually hit that radius that's inside of here, which is actually fairly big. So I just sanded down the tops of these a little bit just to give myself a little bit of clearance within that radius so that I could get this to go around the edge here and then go flat straight um, on the surface of these uh, frames. But I mean, it, this fits well enough. What I'm going to do is go ahead and start drilling out the holes here along the cap and get that held in with Clecos. Uh, along the edge here and from what I can tell as long as I line that up with the edge of this uh, Angle on the top which is where it's supposed to be. It's actually not supposed to it's not supposed to be flush with the outside skin It's actually supposed to be inset by the thickness of the skin and actually go along the edge of the uh, Angle here and that's the way all four corners are set up. Not exactly why, sure why um, but it is and it seems to work just fine. So uh, when I go ahead and line that up here on this edge, it's perfectly flush with each one of these frames on the outside. So I don't even have to trim that. It appears along the outside edge here. As long as I align that with the, out, the outside edge when I go ahead and drill all of the holes in here, it looks like it's going to fit absolutely perfect. And then I can go back after I get that in here and go ahead and drill through where the holes are supposed to be here on each one of the frames. Um, but yeah, it looks like it's going to fit perfect. And I got to say, uh, this was actually um, a modification that was given to me by Shannon. So. I, I got to give Shannon credit. I didn't want to say anything about it until I actually had it fit into here to verify that yes, this truly is uh, basically as perfect a fit as you can get. And um, all I know is this is going to fit perfect. So this is what I'm going to use. And I will thank Shannon for this because from what I can tell, I don't have to trim this or anything. I can just go ahead and uh, put my Clecos in place and go ahead and position it in here just as is. So I'm gonna keep working on this and I'll get the other one bent here in a few minutes. I do wish I could have gotten a little bit tighter radius here. It probably doesn't matter, um, but uh, I'm almost thinking that had I, had I done this again, I probably would not have radius this form at all. And I can tell you, I didn't radius it much. I mean, I put a slight, I just really rounded the edge just with a piece of sandpaper, but uh, it's very difficult with this compound bend here to get a tight radius on here because you're pounding this down and it doesn't want to go flat. Um, and so it doesn't want to create a radius. And if I, if I had gone around it with a, a, a metal hammer, um, I probably could have gotten that, that radius a lot tighter, but I'm not sure I could have done that without putting dents, you know, all the way along the the outside of here because as I would go and pound on here this doesn't want to sit flat it wants to spring back and stay you know like this I probably would have put dents all the way along this trying to get that tighter and I really don't want that because I want this to look nice and clean uh, when I get it on here and having this nice radius on the inside of the airplane 
I don't see that that's any drawback at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, keep fitting this into place, try and get some temporary sheet metal fasteners in here to hold this and keep working on this until it's, until the fit is perfect, so. Okay, so what I did remember is that the holes were already drilled in this upper skin uh, part that goes on the forward part of the fuselage. So I am just gonna use the holes that I already have in here to align with the cop cockpit combing or cockpit border that's underneath and I'll drill through and go ahead and at least from frame four forward use that as my template uh, for all of the rivet holes and then what I will have to do is probably just mark from here back to frame seven it's not that big of a deal I'll go ahead and mark the uh, the, the rivet holes and go ahead and drill those into place I think they're just supposed to be centered on the side ones here and I think I can measure that pretty pretty evenly and uh, go ahead and just put 16th inch holes and start uh, drilling this out uh, to final fit this into place but I'm going to go ahead and do here from frame four all the way forward with the front skin in place here so I can get that all connected together so since I was going to try and get this uh, um, cockpit border installed here and drilled according to this I decided to go back and start here at the front and just start drilling all of the uh, uh, holes out and installing the Clecos for this forward skin now I did end up with as I moved along here trying to keep that gap exactly what it should be which is right at the edge of the angle not at the edge of the skin uh, at least not at the edge of the side skin so I should be able to see the edge of the side skin and as I'm moving across here once I hit right about frame two here I did end up with the skin coming out and aligning with the outside edge of the side skin so I'm about a half a millimeter um, inset with the side here compared to the curvature of what this top skin thinks it should be now it comes back right about here so it's really between let's see it's between here and about here that i've got about a half a millimeter of a curve um, that uh, causes this top skin to stick out just a tiny bit. Now what I can do is that's easy to fix because what I'll do is after I get done drilling all these in I'll mark that and I'll come back with a sander and I'll just sand the skin off here so that it's perfectly flush with where it should be which is the edge of that angle in there. So I'm, I'm gonna fix that and of course it comes back now to being where it should be and it seems to stay where it should be all the way back to here. So it's not something that uh, I would wanna try and pull the skin in to try and meet up with the, uh, with the fuselage because frame two is holding this together. Um, and what it would do is it would start buckling this skin up here, which I don't wanna do. So, um, so I'm just gonna worry about that later, I'll mark it, and then I'll keep going here and keep drilling these out and, and going ahead and installing the Clecos all the way back to the middle of frame four. Okay, so I finished installing the, uh, the Clecos back to where the uh, end of the forward uh, skin is for the fuselage. Um, I have that fitting really well. Like I said, I'm gonna come back and just trim a little bit on the edge here on both the uh, cockpit border and here it's literally a half a millimeter. Um, but you can see now that I've got clamps on the frames here holding the cockpit border in place, you can see I've got a perfect gap right here, perfect edge here, right along the edge of the uh, angles here. So, I mean, this that's couldn't fit any better. This is great. I mean, I'm just gonna go ahead and mark, go ahead and final drill the rest of these holes in place and get some uh, Clecos installed in here. And then uh, once this side is done, I'll go ahead and start working on the other side. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, absolutely perfect. So I was just getting ready to start marking out here to drill the holes into this cockpit border for the locations of the rivets. Um, I went and looked at the plans to try and figure out where these rivets are supposed to go, assuming they're supposed to be, you know, in between each one of the side ones. This is where it gets a little bit confusing when you're trying to work on some of this stuff, uh, depending on the order that you're doing it. Um, the plans basically indicate uh, a even spacing between here with the rivets up to here where the canopy gets mounted. Now that's on the other side though, so I do have to look at that for this side. But on the other side, it's going from the canopy mount forward spacing, and then there's a, um, a spacing of, I think, 52 millimeters between that and the uh, 
next rivet that's supposed to be installed, which is actually on the opposite side of frame six. So it looks like there's supposed to be one rivet that's centered between uh, a, a, the alignment here of where frame six was riveted, and then you, um, on either side, are supposed to measure between the, uh, the mounting for the canopy hinge and on the other side, it's supposed to end up at the end, six millimeters from where the rear, um, the rear canopy border is. So there's, there's a border that goes across the front here, and we do need to bend the lip here, but this is where the forward canopy mount ends up going. But there's another piece similar to this that starts right about here and goes backwards across the rear fuselage for the clear um, Lexan piece that gets mounted um, where the canopy starts, where the actual canopy itself that flips open starts. So you're supposed to then center from there back to here these six rivets or so uh, that are supposed to go in there. So it's almost like you can't really install these two on either side of frame six until you know exactly where those are going to end up. Um, but I think what I might end up doing is just skipping this rivet, skipping this rivet, and then going ahead assuming that the rest of these are evenly spaced in between these rivets. And that way, if the end of that uh, border piece that ends up starting here is a little bit off, I can adjust that first rivet here. And then of course I can adjust then where this latch goes if I just leave the rivet out of there, but then assume that these are centered back up to here. I think that'll look the best anyway. Uh, the fact that, that this might mount a little bit off center from exactly the center um, or that the end of this tail piece might be off from exactly center, I don't think it's a big deal. Now, all of that is what's applicable to that side because that's the side that has the markings in it for uh, the canopy latch, which goes on that side. There's obviously not a canopy latch on this side. So I need to just double check and see if I can just do center spacing all the way along here and not worry about it. Um, or what I might do is do, because this isn't exactly in the center here, I might just do a rivet exactly up from frame six here and then evenly spaced that way, evenly spaced that way. Um, again, I'm, I'm not sure what's right or wrong. Uh, I do need to check if there's anything on this side that attaches. If the hinge is over there, the latch is over here. And uh, so let me look at the latch in the drawing and see if I can see anything else that's gonna prevent me from drilling these out evenly spaced. So. All right, I think I've got this uh, riveting plan here figured out for this cockpit border. Now, it, it is different on the other side slightly, uh, and I guess I don't really have to follow the same rules on this side. I can really just evenly space them. However, I did figure out that there's supposed to be 170 millimeters from the front of frame 7 to where the end of that rear combing starts, or rear, rear um, windshield border starts. So there's supposed to be a rivet that's obviously six millimeters from the end of where that is, and this line here is where that border is supposed to start. It's supposed to be six millimeters a rivet, and then between this rivet and the one that's on the end here, uh, there should be, I think, six evenly spaced rivets. So I can go ahead and do that. Um, and then there's supposed to be basically a rivet that is centered on frame six, it looks like. Uh, and then I believe what I can do is go ahead, because that's really in the center anyway, then I should be able to, from here up to here, just evenly space the rivets. I don't see anything wrong with that. This is a hinge marking, but that's for the other side, not for this side. And it's so close to the center, it really doesn't matter. So I'm gonna go ahead from here, uh, you know, from here back to here is go ahead and evenly space them. I am going to follow this mark here, do a rivet head six millimeters from that edge, and then center uh, the rest of these on back. Um, I'm only going to do them to the three thirty seconds uh, hole size anyway. They'll get drilled out to an eighth inch, and then once I get that um, that that rear canopy border actually installed, we'll go ahead and drill that out and drill everything out to an eighth inch from here back. But uh, that'll at least get this in the proper place so that I can go ahead and get the uh, the foam supports that are supposed to go in here. It's supposed to be some Divinicel foam that goes on the inside of this. And then we want to actually attach these to the frames on the inside of here also. So I want to get as much of this completed and set up before I attach the rear fuselage and worry about the rear border. But uh, over there, what I'll probably end up doing is something similar, but I'll leave the rivets out 
or the rivet holes out where the um, hinge is supposed to go just so I can adjust the hinge here and here and drill those as it, the canopy fits in place um, because I have a feeling that once we make the canopy frame um, we might want to adjust the hinge location slightly uh, on the fuselage rather than trying to adjust them on the canopy. So I'm going to go ahead and finish drilling this size, this side out and go ahead and get the uh, Clecos installed um, so I can start working on the other side. All right, so here's what it looks like with the um, cockpit border on the left side, at least drilled along the angles at the top and put into place in conjunction with the uh, drilling of the front skin here. So this looks great. Um, what we'll have to do is I've got some holes that need to be drilled back here in the corners um, and then we have to go back and drill out the holes that need to be here on each one of the frames um, but it's it's conforming to exactly the shape um, I have a really nice fit here on all of these frames which is great um, we do have to go back and put some uh, uh, foam stiffeners that are going to get mounted and basically fill this gap on the bottom uh, of each one of these in between uh, so we'll be doing that at some point when we go to permanently install this but this initial fit bending and uh, drilling is is turning out really really nice so this side looks great I'm gonna start working on this side next all right so I, I just finished bending the uh, right side cockpit border and again you can see I still got the same waviness which is good and I tried to just I, I actually bent this about halfway with my thumbs you know basically two thumbs just pushing it down evenly across and then went back with the rubber mallet uh, once down one direction and back the other direction just you know pounding this basically as tight as I could around this radius and just allowed this you know automatic uh, rippling process to just happen and it it spreads itself quite evenly across the uh, the border here so once I pop this out it should straighten back up and or at least you know conform to that compound curve and we'll go ahead and try and fit this one on the right side of the fuselage all right I popped this uh, right side out and it looks uh, pretty much as good as the left side did um, I do have to on the back side here I do have to cut into here a little bit to make this uh, 12 millimeter flange that needs to be bent on the end here that goes against uh, frame seven. Uh, my eighth inch router bit won't quite cut all the way into there uh, because it gets a little bit too narrow. So I just go ahead and take a uh, Dremel tool with a, uh, uh, you know, one of those fiber disc cutting uh, bits and just cut this back a little bit more. And then I'll just go ahead and bend over that 12 millimeter flange there. Once I do that, then I can actually fit this in there and go ahead and start the drilling process. I don't see why this isn't going to fit just as good as the left side, so I'm just going to keep working on this and start drilling the holes in place. I was able to finish uh, the installation, uh, or at least the initial fit and drill out of the uh, cockpit border on the right side, uh, just like I did the left side. This was just as easy to do. I, I really didn't have any issues with this. Once it was formed, I had to do a little bit of uh, you know, hand manipulation to get the angle correct here uh, by just running my hand up and down it and, and pinching it a little bit um, just to get it so that it, it was flush here with the, uh, um, the frames that are in here already and then flush with the cap on the outside. Now I did leave uh, a hole out here which is where the cockpit uh, canopy hinge is supposed to be um, and the forward hinge is supposed to be right up here. So I went ahead and left those undrilled because I figured once I get the canopy uh, frame created and start working on the hinges then we'll go ahead and place these in the, the right spot so uh, but the rest of the holes are drilled uh, and everything is actually fitting really well um, I have a nice tight skin on the front here um, I have nice edge all the way along here on both sides like I said I'm going to trim just a little bit on this one side right here where the uh, um, the cockpit border doubles over the top and ends. Uh, I'm just going to trim a little bit off there, but other than that, the fit, the fit really looks good. So I can take a shot down here just to see the edge inside. A nice curve, looks great. I'm, I'm actually very happy with this. Um, so uh, I think what I'm going to do next is I did not finish 
some of the stiffeners that are down in here. So I have to install the stiffeners in here, but I also need to start working on making the stiffeners that go up behind here, uh, basically along the bottom edge of this entire cockpit border from the front to the back here, there is supposed to be a piece of foam that fills this space between the frames. Um, so I'm gonna probably start working at some point getting those glued into place because I wanna get those in there so that I can make sure that I have the bottom edge of this border you know, fitting where it needs to be. Um, I don't know if I'm going to, I, I don't know what I'm gonna do yet as far as gluing this in place and riveting it. Obviously I can't rivet it in place until I'm ready to rivet the, until I have the, the, the rear fuselage attached and have the border for the um, rear canopy uh, that's fixed in place, installed. Um, I can't rivet this up here on the front until I get this front section of the fuselage riveted in place and ready to be installed, which isn't gonna be for a long time because I'm gonna work on the fuel tank, I'm gonna work on the, you know, the, the pedal tray that goes in here, I got rudder pedals, I've got, uh, things on the front like the engine mounts. I've got a lot of stuff that I want to do and still have access inside of here I'm also going to modify this front cover part that goes on here and put some access holes in here Like other builders have done to be able to get into the forward part of this fuselage um, with some removable cover plates uh, That go in there, but I've been trying to figure out if I'm going to be able to create a small compartment out of that uh, that's kind of going to depend on when I get the pedal tray in here and how much tow room there is up there. But I was hoping to actually recess a tray on either side here that was maybe an inch deep. Something I could put, uh, you know, batteries in. Uh, something I could even possibly put, uh, um, you know, wiring and, and uh, even for my engines and, you know, for example, the, uh, the ECU could go in there. Things that that are specific to each engine could be somehow mounted in a small tray that could be removed then to gain access to what's underneath and gain access to you know the the, the pedal uh, supports uh, rudder pedals cables that type of thing I haven't decided exactly how i'm gonna do that yet and and what i'll actually do is i'll take the skin off i'll put it back in my cnc machine and then cut the holes out with the machine um, which I can do at any time. So I'm just kind of using this to fit everything, get all the holes drilled, make sure that this cockpit border is fitting the way it should. And uh, very happy with how this is coming out. So I put the, uh, the forward fuselage back onto its side frame um, because I'm gonna keep working on this cockpit border. Um, so we got these bent the other day, they fit really, really well. So I'm gonna move to the next step, which is that we need to start cutting some of the foam uh, divini cell to go underneath the edge here between each one of the frames. And that basically creates a cap that goes on the bottom of this cockpit border. So right along this edge here, it's supposed to follow with a uh, divini cell foam uh, cap. So I'm gonna start cutting some foam pieces at the height it's supposed to be based on what these uh, frame heights are. And I think it's right around 25 and a half millimeters tall. And I'll just start fitting them in between each one of these approximately where the base of this cockpit border is gonna end up. The goal, the goal is gonna be to glue each one of these in between here, positioned in the right spot so that I can then come back later and go ahead and glue this cap not only on top of the uh, divini cell foam parts that are here but also onto the top edge of the angle here that's on the fuselage so that's what we're trying to work on next is just to get these fit into place we want to do this while we still have the side form out so that we can put weight on top of this and make sure that this dries in the correct correct um, shape of the fuselage although i don't think this is really going to move anymore at this point with all the frames in here and the stiffeners that are in here and everything else um but what i'm not going to do of course is the front um sheet metal part that goes over the nose of the uh cree -cree here extends back to i believe it's this rivet right here right in front of frame four i believe that's the one and then we've got the rear um, canopy combing uh, that actually mounts on top of the fuselage once they're connected together that starts uh, right here I believe somewhere around here um, actually I think it's this one here I think I've got one rivet hole here and then I've got the canopy hinge that mounts here um, so I can't put any rivets into this here because that has to go through um, the, uh, the the top can't rear canopy mounting and then up here 
we can't put any rivets up here until we get the forward skin permanently attached. So there's about 12 rivets in between here that I could go ahead and pop rivet this onto with, but I think what I'm gonna do is just get this glued into place. I might go ahead and put these 12 rivets in between here, that's not gonna hurt anything, but as long as I have used the Clecos to hold this down and actually epoxy this into place and epoxy it along the Divini cell stiffeners that we're gonna install in here, I think I can just leave it like that until we're ready to actually attach the rear fuselage and finish that and attach the forward skin and finish that. Um, but that'll at least get me, get these permanently installed for now, exactly where they need to be. And then I can come back later and just final drill out the rest of the rivet holes to an eighth inch and get it riveted together. So that's my goal right now is to just get the foam stiffeners and get this in here so that I can glue this into place. Um, we do have to create an angle that attaches here. Uh, that goes between frame two and this. There's just, it's just a little angle piece and I think it's got two rivets into uh, this cockpit border and then two that get mounted into frame two. So we'll go ahead and get that made also. This uh, rear one was already bent as part of this cockpit edge so we just need to drill two holes in here and pop some rivets in there. But I'm not gonna do those until I get the foam stiffeners in here so that I can establish exactly what the height needs to be. Um, so I'm just gonna start cutting some foam stiffeners and start fitting them into here and see if I can get uh, one of these sides done so that I can prepare it for gluing before I leave at the end of the day. So you can't see it here, but I did cut the foam pieces to fit behind this cockpit border here uh, between frame two and frame seven on the right side. Now, what I'm trying to figure out is I wanna go ahead and drill the rivet holes that are supposed to go through this cockpit border into the frames at the top. Um, there's obviously a bracket I mentioned that has to go here uh, on frame two, but there's two rivets that need to go here, two that need to go here on each side of frame four, two here and two here. Now what it appears is, is that everything on the right side, I should be able to go ahead and just drill the rivet holes specified in the plans, which is I think, uh, I think it's seven millimeters down from the top and then 12, I'm not really sure, I gotta look. Anyway, there's two rivets that go in each one of these. Um, the left side, however, has on frame six and the aft side of frame four, a nut plate that needs to go in there because that's where the canopy latches are actually going to bolt to. So I think I'm good on this side. I'm gonna go ahead and drill out the rivets, rivet holes in this so I can put some Clecos in here. Um, because what I'm thinking about doing is putting glue on those foam stiffeners that are behind there. I think, uh, let's see if you can see them. Yeah, you can see them behind there now. Um, and what I'm thinking of doing is temporarily putting this into position and holding it in with temporary sheet metal fasteners, not only here on the frames, but also along the border while those dry. And then what I might do is just put a you know, thin piece of board across here and some clamps to just clamp this down to make sure that these stay uh, you know, flush with the bottom of where this is gonna eventually be glued onto it. Uh, I think that's the easiest way to make sure that I get these you know, positioned uh, you know, as, as good as I can. Um, when you have this all off, it's difficult because these things bend, they don't have a cap on them yet like these did so they don't want to stay straight um, and I need to just try and keep them in the best position I can. So I'm going to go ahead and drill these uh, rivet holes now first and uh, then I'll move on to gluing those into place. So I just marked the center line on a piece of tape here up each one of the frames and went ahead and marked uh, it, these holes are supposed to be seven millimeters from the top and then 12 apart. I basically on mine did six from the bottom and then 12 up, so I did six and uh, 18 um, to mark from the bottom. I had a, you know, it's easier, you get a nice crisp edge at the bottom here to measure up from rather than trying to add, you know, measure down from a curved side. So I just did that on each one of these. I've got all my rivet holes now um, done to the 3.30 seconds because that's what I'm just going to use to hold these into place while I'm gluing in the uh, stiffeners and then I'll drill them out to eighth inch when I go to actually rivet these in place. So uh, I am going to take this apart now I think and go ahead and start preparing to uh, glue these stiffeners into place and like I said I'm going to Clico this back on here after I get these glued, you know, after I get glue on these on the bottom and on the ends uh, just so I can and align the foam properly uh, with the bottom edge of this and then I can also use this uh, as a clamping uh, surface to be able to clamp down and hold these into place once I get them you know into position along the bottom here and um, just try and get them nice and straight so I'm gonna take this part go ahead and prepare these for glue and get these glued into place 
So I just took the cap back off um, and I'm gonna prepare these for glue. I just thought I'd mention, you know, getting these spaced in here properly, I was really worried about measuring and figuring out exactly where these needed to, to be glued into place, but they really, um, and I think it's probably because I'm using these 3 8 inch um, pieces of Divini cell, but it basically aligns with the very edge of the um, the angle, the corner angle that's on the fuselage here. So if I just put them basically there, and then on the other side, they ride right up against the rivets that are installed uh, on each frame through the outside of the fuselage. So the, these kind of just fit right into place, right where they're supposed to go, uh, which is kind of nice. I just thought I'd point that out. Um, so I don't have to do any, uh, you know, marking with tape or trying to, to mark a line to figure out where to actually apply glue and put these into place. They pretty much just fall right into place. And I just have to keep the tops aligned with the uh, bottom of the uh, the cockpit edge once I get it clecoed into place on here and get it clecoed to each one of these uh, each one of these frames. But uh, this looks great. This is actually going pretty quickly. It's only taken me a couple hours of monkeying around to get ready to glue this into place. So I'm going to mix up some glue and start gluing these in. All right, I finished uh, getting glue on these stiffeners and installing them underneath the right side of the cockpit border. Um, and as I mentioned before, I'm not gluing in the border at this point. I'm just gluing in the uh, stiffeners and then I'll come back later and do a separate step where I glue the border in place. Um, so yeah, and uh, I just had some scraps of foam that I stuck underneath these clamps to run all the way along here. And this is when it's good to have a lot of clamps because this worked really well. So the clamps are actually holding and pinching the uh, cockpit border to the um, stiffeners that I'm trying to glue in place. And one of the things I did do is I used a, uh, a small Allen key that was smaller than the 3 seconds holes that I have drilled in here. And if I needed to push out the um, the foam to make it even with the cockpit border. I just took out a Clico and stuck this into the uh, hole and just would use it to push it out and then I would clamp it down on top to make sure that I got this as, as straight and even as possible. And then I did go back and just clean up a little bit of glue along the edge there with, again, another scrap of foam that I had. That actually worked well because you can just run it right in the corner and it gets the glue right out. So I'm just going to leave this overnight. We'll come back tomorrow and we'll take all the clamps off and the foam then should be glued in place. And then we'll work on doing the other side next. All right, I just got back to the shop this morning and I went ahead and pulled all of the Clecos out of the border that I was just using here to support the foam strips that I glued to the side of the fuselage overnight. Uh, while I was pulling it off, I did drill out the rivet holes here from uh, 330 seconds to the final eighth inch size. Um, and what I'm planning on doing now is I'm going to go ahead and just allodyne this. And by the way, on the back side of here, you, I don't know if you can see it or not, but I did put uh, plastic tape, um, just clear tape along the back side of here so that um, if I got any glue that spilled over here on the edges when it was being glued that it didn't stick to the back side of this So I'm gonna pull that tape off. I'm gonna clean this part up And I think what I'm gonna do is I am gonna go ahead and allodyne this I was thinking about not allodyning it, but it gets covered over in the back here partially by the back trim it gets covered almost halfway down with the uh, the, the, the front part that mounts over here and then we've got um, canopy hinge mounts that go here. So I, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and allodyne this. I can always polish the allodyne off if I ever wanted to in any spots on the outside, but I'm, I'm actually leaning more towards painting the airplane anyway, so it's not really gonna matter. Um, plus it'll protect the inside of this uh, area from uh, corrosion inside. So I'm gonna clean this up, I'm gonna allodyne this, and then what I'm planning to do is go ahead and glue this on here. So I'm going to use some uh, Scotch Brite, and I'm going to clean off the allodyne on the uh, the edge here, um, and also on these uh, spots here where it's going to be glued, uh, you know, metal to metal. And then we'll go ahead and just put some glue across here, and I'm going to put it back together exactly like it was when I was holding the foam strips in here. And I'll put the clamps across there, and I'll put all the temporary sheet metal fasteners, um, Clecos in here to hold it along the uh, angled edge here. I am going to go ahead and put the pop rivets in here, though. I figure I might as well just pop rivet this in its final place. So that's what I'm gonna work on right now. Let me, uh, let me get this allodyned and ready to glue and I'll start mixing up some glue in a few minutes. So I finished gluing uh, this um, cockpit rail side on last night and I came back this morning. I just pulled all the uh, temporary sheet metal fasteners out and um, it looks great. 
Good here from the inside here. Yeah, it came out pretty good. I went ahead and just put the pop rivets in after I took out all of the Clecos and uh, cleaned this up a little bit. I had a little bit of glue residue. I had to get off of the bottom where it was clamped, but otherwise it looks really good. Um, I did go ahead and put two pop rivets in the back corner here. Um, so I went and drilled those. And then what I'm working on right now is there is an angle that's supposed to be installed up here between uh, frame two and the uh, cockpit rail here. So I just made this little piece, bent it, and I'm starting to drill it uh, and get it ready for uh, riveting. So I'm just gonna rivet that in real quick. And once that's done, this, this rail is really finished. Um, this one came out good. I'm pretty happy with it. So what we're gonna do next then is start on the rail over there. Um, and I'm gonna start making all of the foam um, um, foam parts that need to go underneath the uh, the rail here. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do too is there are two foam pieces that are supposed to go on either side here uh, between frame six and frame seven. I forgot to make them and install them uh, in the previous video so I am while I'm making these foam pieces up here for the uh, left side of the cockpit I'm gonna go ahead and make the foam pieces that need to go in the bottom here. There's some corner angle foam pieces that we're supposed to make that actually go on either side of the uh, parts that actually go between frame six and frame seven. So they're, they're a little different than what we've done here, here with these other uh, stiffeners slightly. So I will be making those next also. So I'm just gonna finish pop riveting this corner in and uh, start working on the other side. Um, so now that I've finished the cockpit side border on the right side of the fuselage, I'm now gonna work on the left side. And this is pretty much gonna go exactly the same way um, as the right side. The only difference is, is there's a couple of nut plates that we need to worry about for the canopy latches that are located on the left side and not on the right side. Um, so in, within the cockpit border on the left side, there's a nut plate that has to be installed on the back side of frame four. And there's also one that has to be installed on frame six. Now, they're not a big deal other than they're supposed to be attached with um, the 3 seconds uh, countersunk rivets through the surface of the um, cockpit border and obviously, obviously then through the surface of the frame with a nut plate on the back. And what we have to figure out though is we have to get the nut plate on the back, hold it in place with everything drilled out and then put the cockpit border over the top of it and then pop rivet through it and grab that nut plate on the back and have it uh, attached. So it's going to be a bit of a uh, it's going to be a bit of a process because I'm going to have to figure out a way of keeping that nut plate behind here so that I can keep it there and then get to it and pull it up and align the rivet holes after it's completely covered up with the cockpit border. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is not worry about it right now. I'm going to go ahead and do the, uh, the stiffeners. I'm going to cut the foam stiffeners that fit all between here. And I'm going to do the same thing I did last time where I actually will glue those into place with the cockpit border just pinned into place. Um, get those done first. Then I'll come back and go ahead and drill out the rivets that need to go through the cockpit border into the frames. And then at that time, I will probably drill out the hole for these nut plates. And then maybe what I'll do is actually take a long bolt or something with, uh, with the head cut off of it so that I can screw the nut plate onto the back of it and have it sticking up through here so that I can grab it and pull the nut plate up when I'm ready to actually uh, put the pop rivets in after the border is put on. And what I can do is then just slip the border over the top of that bolt that's sticking out and then pull them together all at once and get the holes lined up for the rivets. I think that's the only way I can do it. I don't know how else to do it. I could just use a wire method or something, but you know, without having it attached so that I can control it back and forth in each direction and spin it so that I can line up the rivet holes, I think it's easier just to use a cutoff bolt when I do that. Um, one note though, uh, you know, I did not attach frame, the top of frame two yet. And I did run into a bit of a problem on this side because it's very difficult to drill, final drill out these holes here to the eighth inch si size once the cockpit border is on. Um, I was able to do it through the other side with my angle drill, but I decided to go back and actually drill these out first. So I drilled all the corner holes here out on frame two to the final eighth inch size. What I will have to do though, is the one that's behind the cockpit border, which is this top corner rivet, I will have to pop rivet that from the back eventually. Uh, it's not a big deal. Uh, we can do the other three then here from the front using the pop rivet gun, but this one I won't be able to get to because it will be completely covered up by that cockpit border.
Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is just go ahead and start cutting the foam pieces, fitting them here in here like I did last time and try and get this ready so that I can glue those foam pieces down tonight uh, before I leave. So I'd forgot to do this earlier. So I went ahead and uh, cut the foam supports that are supposed to go behind frame six here, between frame six and frame seven. There's two lower uh, uh, foam stiffeners that are supposed to go on the bottom of the fuselage. Uh, these are exactly the same as the side stiffeners in that they're 20 millimeters tall. They are supposed to get an aluminum cap on top of them. So we're supposed to put a, uh, you know, 40 thousandths, I'm sorry, 20 thousandths cap on top of each one of these, which I'll do tonight. I'll probably glue those caps on. And then there's these little triangles that we're supposed to make that fit in here. And these are supposed to be made out of the, basically the same material that the ribs are made out of. So this is the Clegicel uh, or Divini Cell 100. Um, and this is only the six millimeter thick, whereas, you know, these are close to three eighths. Uh, so, or this is quarter inch, I guess it would be. So I went ahead and made these. Now, I made these slightly bigger than what the plans show. I think they are supposed to be 50 millimeters wide and 47 millimeters tall, and then this is a 45 degree angle. And what they're supposed to do is they're basically supposed to fit against frame six and then all the way up to the top so that this little flat spot here on top should be resting right underneath the bottom side of frame six here. Um, my frame six, after bending it and everything, ended up just slightly taller, so I made these a little bit bigger. Um, these aren't necessarily supposed to fit flush with the bottom of the fuselage. They're just supposed to go in here and then all the way up and then glued to the sides of these. So there isn't really a requirement that these fit flush against frame six and across the bottom of the fuselage, unlike the other stiffeners that we've done. They're just supposed to go against frame six all the way up and then glued to the side of these stiffeners here. Um, now I might, because I've got these fit in here really well, all the way up the side and the bottom, I'm not sure why I shouldn't just glue these to the bottom of the fuselage and to the back, which fits all the way up to the top anyway, uh, and then glue them to the side. I don't know if there's any reason that not to do that um, instead of just leaving a gap underneath here. It's probably just not necessary for extra stiffening support on the bottom here to have these touching the bottom because it's designed to transfer the force from frame six to this stiffener, which then transfers to the bottom. So uh, it, it, again, it's just not critical that they fit flat against the bottom of the fuselage according to the plans. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the caps for these and I'll glue the cap on tonight so that tomorrow I can come back and just glue these into the fuselage and then I'll just stick these in here and just put a uh, clamp across the two of these like so to hold them into place and I'll glue those in. These don't need any kind of cap on top. Um, that is a, a minor concern of mine only because you might be likely to want to set something behind the seat here in the airplane in this area. And obviously if you just have this bare foam sticking out and showing, you could nick that foam up if you set anything that's hard back in here. Obviously you've got the uh, caps on top of here so you provide some protection for this foam because it does have a, uh, an aluminum cap on it. But um, I don't know, I might do something down the road to help protect all of this or make some kind of tray maybe that fits in here if I need to set anything behind the seat. Um, I mean, even a small travel bag or something, not that I'm gonna travel in this, but <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> uh, you just have a tendency to run out of space and wanna set something back here and there is gonna be room back here because the seat back is gonna go, you know, in these holes here and up the back here. So there is space back here for something. What that something is, I'm not really sure. Uh, so let me go ahead and uh, cut the caps for these and I'll get those glued and let them sit overnight. I just came in this morning and pulled the weights that I had on top of these uh, stiffeners that are installed between frame uh, six and frame seven on the bottom of the fuselage. So those are now complete. You can see I've got the corner blocks in here which are made out of the quarter inch uh, rib material. Um, so this turned out really good. That was pretty easy to do. Uh, and so we're gonna move on to the next step. So I'm gonna mix up some glue right now and go ahead and glue these into place. I got done cutting them for the uh, left side. Um, so the only thing I, I did do here is on the end, I did cut a little piece and stuck it in here uh, to kind of create a wedge to push this one against this 
um, frame two here when I glue it. Uh, I did that on the other side too, but I didn't show it. It works out real well when I put the cap over the top. It keeps, um, it keeps the foam flush with the back edge of here uh, when I go ahead and clamp it in place. Um, otherwise it gets, has a tendency if you take this out here to want to get sucked up into here, especially because the 45 wants to push it out. Um, or at least whatever that angle is, 30 degree angle or whatever. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and mix up some glue, go ahead and glue these into place, and uh, we'll let it dry overnight. So this is the left side of the uh, cockpit area that I have glued the foam uh, supports underneath the edge here. I just came back today, took off all the clamps. Um, I did pull out all the temporary sheet metal fasteners here to just look at it. It looks great and fine, so I put them all back in. And now what I'm going to do is go ahead and start drilling the rivet holes that need to go here, just like we did on the other side. Um, but I'm also going to try and locate and drill the nut plate that needs to go here on the back side of frame four, and the other nut plate that go needs to go on the back side of frame six here. Um, so I'm going to try and get all those drilled. I obviously need to get those nut plates behind here before I glue this down permanently, but my goal is to get everything drilled out so that I can take this off, go ahead and alanine this, and then uh, prep everything for gluing. And as I mentioned before, I'm going to try and figure out a way of hiding a nut plate behind there and either using a bolt or something sticking out through here so that I can grab a hold of that and actually get to the... Uh, uh, you know, be able to pop rivet that in place. Uh, so let me just go ahead and uh, start drilling out these holes and I'll show you what it looks like um, when I'm ready to glue. I'd also uh, point out, uh, this was that side that I had this sheet metal sticking out just a little bit, basically on the last two to three uh, Clecos here. Um, the skin actually started to come out a little bit and was sticking out. I just trimmed this off with just some light sanding. Um, it's a little bit deceptive here. The, the panels on all these corners here are really supposed to be flush with the angle um, and not necessarily flush skin to skin. So the skins aren't really supposed to overlap. I kind of did that same thing here. You can see the skin, well, hopefully you can see it in this, in this video. You can actually see the corner almost of the angle down in there. Um, and of course, if you do this according to the plans, what you're supposed to do is put this uh, 
cockpit border on here, it's supposed to overlap the outside and you're supposed to come back, draw a line and then trim it off theoretically flush, I'm assuming then with the edge of the cockpit. I did mine inset just a little bit, that half a millimeter to meet up with how the rest of the skins are done. That's also how this front cockpit cover skin is done also. It's not intended to go all the way out to the edge of the skin. It's supposed to be inset the thickness of the skin it's perpendicular to. So I think that's the best way to do this. I'm not really sure. Obviously, if you cut this off and did this flush, it's fine. Um, but uh, I just wanted to point that out that that's kind of why you'll see a little uh, groove here basically along the edge. Either way is fine. Okay, I've got the, uh, the holes marked for the rivets. Uh, same as the other side, I did six up from the bottom and then uh, 18 up from the bottom. That ends up being almost exactly what the measurements are from the top edge down, but it's easier to just measure from that crisp edge at the bottom than tr trying to measure from around that angle. Um, so uh, here on the aft side of frame uh, four, what I've got is the nut plate that basically goes almost in the middle. I did 12 up from the bottom. It's supposed to be 13 down from the top, and I think this is 25 millimeters. So that works out right there. Um, I did the same thing on frame six here. That's where the nut plates need to go. Um, and then there's a nut plate that's supposed to go 35 millimeters down from this one, which actually ends up right where this rivet is. That's what I went ahead and did is put a rivet right where that one would go, knowing that I would drill it out later, and that would be basically the center of the nut plate that goes there. And what we'll have to do is also install a nut plate here, 35 millimeters down. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill these out, and then I'll go ahead and uh, get this part allodyned and ready to be glued into place. So I've got a, a nut plate now behind here, and the hole here at the base of the nut plate actually goes into where the foam goes underneath. So you can kind of push the nut plate in there, and that rivet hole it kind of holds it into place because you kind of insert it into the foam. Um, but I did put a screw in here just to hold it in place, make sure in case it falls out, I can locate it again and get it back into place. Um, and I did that on this one also. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, scotch bright all the areas where I've got metal to metal gluing and go ahead and mix up some glue and get this border um, glued into place. So let me, uh, I still have to alodyne it, so I'm going to go alodyne it now and then I'll uh, mix up some glue and uh, we'll finish this up. So I flipped the fuselage right side up just to scuff up uh, and clean the uh, edges here that are going to be glued. And you can see the nut plate here behind frame six at the top. Just wanted to let you see what that looked like. There's the one here for frame four. Um, and you can see it's kind of embedded into the foam, um, but I still want to have something in here to hold it in place so I can pull it up and get the uh, rivet holes aligned when I put the uh, cockpit border on. So I'm uh, ready to start gluing now, so I'll go ahead and flip it back over on its side and uh, go ahead and mix up some glue.
All right, I came into the shop today and I went ahead and took all the clamps that I had on here off. Um, I drilled out the rivet holes here to, the, um, to clean out the holes and went ahead and installed the rivets where they needed to be installed. I also made, I don't know if you can see it back in here, but I made the little angle that's supposed to attach to frame two and also to this uh, cockpit border and I went ahead and pop riveted that into place. Um, so the only thing I have left to do really on this rail here is I do have to countersink and install the rivets for the nut plate that's still behind here. I'm actually out of the uh, 330 seconds countersunk rivets, so I'm waiting for those to come in. And uh, in the meantime, I'll just leave these uh, studs in here and until I get the rivets, and I'll go ahead and just drill those out and rivet those in place. So um, let's see. The only other thing I forgot to do is I do have to install two rivets back here, which I'll do right now. That was the only thing left. But otherwise, this looks uh, this actually looks really, really, really nice. So. At this point, I'm going to call the cockpit border complete. I'll finish that in a few minutes. And then we're going to move on to the next thing, which I think is going to be the nose gear. So stick around for the next video uh, when we start drilling the holes here necessary to install the nose gear. And we'll start um, making the nose gear parts, which I do have in stock here. So uh, we'll see you in the next video.